Well, this is my views about the automotive crisis that's happening in North America right now. I live in Ontario, southern Ontario, and Ontario makes the most cars in all of North America. It employs 10% of our workforce. In this part of the world, we make you know, Chrysler minivans, millions of them. We're the only place in the world that makes Crown Victorias. That's 30 miles away from me. Those four big Ford cars that haven't changed since 1992. Anyways, we also make planes and heavy armored equipment like those things you see in Iraq that the armored personnel people are driving. And what else? Trains and all that kind of stuff. It's a really automotive based economy. 90% of what we manufacture goes to the United States. So if our car companies go bankrupt, a lot of us are going to lose our jobs. And I'm not even busy anymore either. And I'm a repairman. Good thing I'm pretty much retired now. So let's say, for example, General Motors doesn't get as much money as it needs. Well, sure, the other companies need a lot of money too. GM just needs the most. Well, then the first thing that happens in the United States is it's called Chapter 11 bankruptcy. That doesn't mean General Motors doesn't exist anymore. That means their head executives and people like that don't have full control over the company anymore. People who their creditors hire come in and take control of the financial dealings and business operations of the company. Another thing which is dis a disadvantage for the employees in this situation is new contracts can be made and old contracts can be broken. People could lose their pensions, they could lose a large part of their benefits, they could get reduced wages, and all this probably will for sure happen. Well, last thing, that's the last thing you want to hear when economic times are tough. So that doesn't mean GM is over. That means GM gets restructured in a way that they cannot restructure themselves. Because so long as they exist as operating by their own chief executives and their own decisions, they can't break those contracts and they're going to be spending just as much money as they're spending now. It's like giving a bleeding wound an intravenous but not sewing up the wound. The blood keeps flowing and the company keeps going down unless for some miraculous reason sales skyrocket and stay that way. Toyota and some other foreign companies on, on the other hand, they manufacture all kinds of cars here in Ontario and North America, but they don't have the UAW and the same unions. So they have more efficient contracts, makes the company more profitable. For example, Toyota is the most profitable car company in the world by how much profit it makes per employee. General Motors is the least profitable car company in the world how much money it loses per employee per hour. That's not good to run a business. I was really put off a few weeks ago when the big three executives flew into Canada to like try to discuss a deal to get some money from the Canadian government too. How did they fly? In private business jets at about $20,000 each way. Here they are paying themselves multi-million dollar bonuses every year on top of their salary. They don't care how much money the company's losing. They only care about their own ass and how pampered it is to get from point A to point B. They have the use of any one of their luxury automobiles or fuel efficient automobiles to get the job done. But instead, they didn't change a single thing in how they operate the company. They operated in a way that bled money for their own personal benefit. I don't agree companies should stay in business and do that. Maybe bankruptcy and restructuring and changing the contracts and maybe kicking these guys out or putting them back on basic salary with no bonus is a good idea. No, what, for example, what if General Motors did go completely bankrupt and Chapter 11 couldn't save them? Well, have a beer to that. They still wouldn't be completely gone. There's a lot of capital adventurists out there. People with lots of money who want to take a risk. General Motors makes wonderful cars, the best they've ever made. Some car companies make better cars, but at least GM is making the best cars that they had ever made, just a little bit later than they should have. So, for example, a lot of people like Corvettes. So venture capitalists would get together, and maybe one of them or a bunch of them, would buy the Corvette factory and parts infrastructure, whatever it took to keep that company going. 
most of the same employees would still work there. The company would be run independently by private individuals, might not be on the stock exchange for a while, and it would be run efficiently. And we would have a Corvette of maybe similar quality. It would be exactly the same as the last model that they were producing until they produced the next year's model or whatever. So that wouldn't be such a bad idea. GM is already trying to sell Hummer, Saturn, Saab. Ford's trying to sell Jaguar, Volvo. You know, when you get too big and times aren't like they used to be, you just can't make things work. That's just the way life is. So anyways, Chevrolet is a popular brand. Chevrolet is very diversified. The, the truck division would certainly be bought. There's, that's a good vehicle. What, you know, why not keep Chevrolet trucks around? I'm sure a bunch of other Chevrolet products would uh, be bought by other people too. The worst thing that could possibly happen is auction sale. Well, that's when nobody wants to buy and continue your product. Well then, the bad news is a lot of foreigners and a lot of Chinese people would be over here and they would buy up all the technology and all these really great machines that a company like General Motors or Ford has and take them back to their country and produce one of their products that they might start selling to us in the future and further hurt our economy some more. They, they still do that, you know. When big companies go bankrupt in North America, Chinese are some of the first people over here to buy the technology and buy the equipment, which normally wouldn't be available to them, especially at a cut rate price like that. So I'm not looking forward to automotive companies going bankrupt in North America. I drive a Chrysler myself totally agree they're not the best vehicle in the world. I like their styling. I like their simplicity. They certainly are a lot better to work on than some other vehicles. I like their low price. I like their durability. So for the price and me being a cheap person and bang for your buck, they don't last a whole lot less long than an expensive foreign car. Their parts are cheaper to fix. Sure, you got to fix them more often, but they're good enough for me. And they're ubiquitous. They're everywhere, so they're just easy to get stuff for, especially used parts, and that's what I like. Now let's say, for example, one auto company like General Motors is completely bankrupt, and everything they're doing, at least in North America, is pretty much out of business. Well, that would hurt all the parts suppliers and unfortunately the parts suppliers make the parts for Toyota and Nissan and Honda and Chrysler and Ford too. So a lot of them might go bankrupt or get restructured or whatever's going to happen so that's not a good thing. But it could be a good thing in the long run since General Motors has almost 50 percent of the North American made vehicle auto market. Eventually if the other companies stay in business like Ford and Chrysler, in a few years or maybe just even one year, they become profitable. There's such an oversupply of cars in North America now because of free interest rates or really low leasing prices in the last several years. There's just, and cars last longer than they used to by far because our quality has gone way up, that we just have too many newer cars and cars are just basically too cheap. <laughs> they seem expensive, but technically by the amount of wages we earn, and our income today compared to what it was 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, it was too cheap. Like for example, my blue piece of shit 1989 Chrysler minivan I bought. I bought it for $100 in 1999. I've been driving it since then. It's still working great. I got the receipt in the glove box. Someone paid $23,000 for that vehicle. And it just has air, cruise, and a cassette deck. That's it. Well, you can buy a lot nicer minivan today with more options for like seventeen or eighteen thousand dollars Canadian. Now that's a deal because that van is twenty years old and twenty years later we're making twice as much money as an income as we were making back then. So maybe it's a subjective way of looking at it but what seems it would be a horrible thing today to happen in a few years could be a great thing. Auto companies would be more efficient, they'd be more profitable if one of them wasn't playing in the same game that they were. We just have oversupply, so that's what it all boils down to. In great times, that's not bad, but in bad times, 
someone's got to go. It's not like the first time we've had North American car companies go bankrupt. We had all kinds of North American cars go bankrupt. All kinds.